can I do for you? Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome and welcome back. Thank you all very much for being here. Babachara, Jason, Richard, JC, Monica, Robert, welcome, guys. How are you? See you around. King's honor, friend. Be careful. Go with honor, friend. So I was debating whether or not I wanted to run uh, with any kind of questy. I, I think I would be fine running with questy, but I might I might change a couple of the options. Uh, mainly icons. If I turn on objectives, I wonder if I can turn the objectives on on the main map, but like not on on the mini map. That would be nice. Also, my the scaling is a little bit weird. That's better. Let's just go with this for now. I'm not going to overthink it too much. Let, let's just hey roll there. with what we have. Safe travel. You need something? Have a good one. See you later. I do want to turn names back on, though. That would be good. There we go. Audrey, good afternoon. Andrew, rather. Good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. Sorry for butchering your name. I appreciate you being here. You know it's been a while since you've played like original vanilla when it takes more than a few swings to kill an enemy and you're kind of surprised. Like it's, it's interesting like how little my white swing actually does. It is nice having Heroic Strike, though. How does the music sound? It seems a little quiet on my end, but it might be my headphones. Let me just do that, and you guys can let me know how the music is compared to me. Yeah. 
It sounds okay. Perfect. I will take it. Good day to you. Safe travels. Pronate, good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is not what I'm looking for. Where is my class trainer? My class trainer is on the other side of the abbey. Uh, back here? Yeah, there we go. What can I do for you? Uh, well, it would be really, really useful if I had That's any right. copper at all. Then we might be in business. <sighs> sigh. Heavy sigh. Whoever you are inviting me to a group, I appreciate you very much. I'm going to be playing solo for now. Mostly because I want my kill XP. See you around. So, yeah. Uh, did that give us the... Yeah, that, that got us a little bit of coin. You need something? Nenya, good afternoon. Welcome. Uh, let's learn Battle Shout. Let's turn that off. Be careful. Hello. Have a good one. See you later. Yeah! 
surprisingly, there are some people who are leveling up in original vanilla classic era uh, in the middle of the day on a Friday. That's adorable. I'm, I'm not alone. There are others here with me. Did I give up on Sod? <clears throat> I, I didn't know like Sod was like a cause that I was championing, championing. I don't know if you can like give up on something like that. Did I give up on Sod? What a question. No, I'm not playing Sod right now because I have nothing I want to do in Sod. It doesn't mean enough to me to be something that I give up on or whatever, but I, I am not playing it right now. That That's true. Karen, good evening. Later than normal? Uh, we had a little stream earlier where I, I played um, Plunderstorm and nobody watched. Uh, just like a little warm-up for the day. While, while I kind of worked out what I wanted to do with the rest of the afternoon. Now, as far as Sod, like, the TLDR is I have my Pally at 40. When the level band opens up, I will level that Pally to 50. I will then park that paladin at 50. When the level band opens up to 60, I will level that paladin to 60. And then we'll see like what kinds of endgame stuff they have for level 60. But that's really my only interest in Sod is getting a character to 60 and then seeing what they do at actual level cap. I'm not really interested in like the fake level caps. It doesn't interest me, so. <laughs> Buffalo Bill, it's cool, man. It's absolutely fine. Yeah, I, it doesn't matter to me. It's it's fine. I, well, I, I get on there and play it. Like, the, the alternative was that I wasn't going to do anything this morning. That was kind of, like, my choice. It's like, I can get on and stream. Like, I know not a lot of people are interested, but I, I have fun doing it. So, my, my choice was jump on and do that while I figure out what else I want to do. Or just sit on my hands and do nothing. So, it's fine. I'm okay with the, I'm okay with a small little stream. Doesn't bother me. <laughs> Colonel Boomer says, I watched, but then has a sad face after. I appreciate the support, I guys. And trade. I, I, I know it, it makes it more difficult when I'm playing a version of the game that nobody Reliance. likes, but... Yeah. It was, it was, it was short, you know? It's not, it's not like I'm gonna do, like, all-day streams of, of Plunderstorm, but every once in a while I'll probably Greetings. get on. Light bless you, or the Alliance. Be careful. What can I do for you? Go with honor, friend. Hey there. See you around. See you later. Yeah, see, see, I can't get ready for Kata yet because in Kata I'm gonna be a Blood Elf warrior. But I can't, I can't be a Blood Elf warrior yet. So I, I can't get ready for Kata. Not until, uh, not until the pre-patch happens. So... Is this hardcore? This is not hardcore. This is, uh, this is exactly what the title of the stream says. This is classic era classic. Just vanilla wow. There, there is no hardcore. There are no modifiers. We are just leveling up in vanilla era. So yeah, that's it. That's what I'm doing this afternoon.
Anastasia, good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. Are many people on the slash who? Yeah, there's some people. There's not a lot of people. Uh, the thing to understand about the slash who, though, is that, like, some of these people are from different realms. So, like, I'm on Mancrick, and some of these people are on Mancrick. A one-handed club. I'll pass. I appreciate you, though. But I will pass on the one-handed club. Some people are, some people are on, you know, different servers, because the servers are clustered together in Classic Era. So you will see people that are on different servers, which is good. It helps it feel like there's people around, uh, even if there's not people around. A season of mastery, yeah, season of mastery. Now, season of mastery had an ex had an experience bonus, so even season of mastery was not like vanilla, vanilla, because you had a you had a forty percent or forty percent or fifty percent, I forget. It was a it was a little XP bonus, and then eventually that XP bonus grew to a hundred percent. I, I do have to say though, like I, I had a better time leveling up in Season of Mastery than I than I have had in Season of Discovery. So now now that being said, Season of Mastery like died really quick. Like Season of Mastery basically died in three months. Like once the majority of players hit max level, they either did the end game content or decided they weren't going to. Like the Season of Mastery died really fast. But I had I had a more enjoyable time leveling up my Season of Mastery character uh, than I have had leveling up any of my sod characters. And the primary... there's two reasons. One of the reasons is runes. Uh, the other reason is just getting getting stopped. Getting stopped at like at, at, at the level brackets, you know, 25, 40. Like, I just don't find that super enjoyable. But the good thing about how they're doing Sod, for people that like Sod, is like, Sod will be longer. Sod will be like a, a longer experience for people than what Season of Mastery got to be. It was like, yeah, so SOM was like a classic fresh start. Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of like a classic fresh start with a little bit of an XP buff to start things off. And I, re I really enjoyed it for the leveling, you know, like I obviously didn't go on to do any raids. I didn't really care. But I did cap like the warrior out at 60. I had my I had my herbalism and alchemy capped out. Like it was a fun it was a fun leveling process. I remember I, I got the two one-handed swords in Zulfarak, and then I put those swords together and I made an epic I made an epic sword. It was the first time I had ever seen anything like that in classic. It was it was amazing. I had a really good good time with SOM. The only shame the shame of it is that it just died really quickly. I think that's why they approached Season of Discovery the way they did, like, with the artificial level brackets, they kind of guarantee that, like, they're gonna have playership, like, throughout a certain amount of time, even if that playership goes away and comes back and goes away and comes back, they, they kind of ensure that the season has a, a more of a longevity. Yeah, like I'm, I'm more than happy to let my paladin sit at 40 and just wait for the level bands to open up. If there's if there's any any chance that I'll do endgame, it'll be at the actual endgame, at the actual level cap. That's really the only... That's really the only time there's a chance that I'll be super interested in raids or anything like that. I'm scratching the, uh, the original warrior itch, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, the Cataclysm Warrior is really powerful and feels decent. Like, I'm, go I'm probably gonna play that class in Cata. It doesn't feel as good, like, early on as the, as the Vanilla Warrior does. But that, that's kind of to be expected. Like, every, everything about Vanilla Era is just superior. So it's kind of to be expected that it's, it's not as good.
Uh, let's see, do I have any upgrades? The shield is an upgrade, um, what else? Leather bracers we can do, male gloves we can definitely do, let's do the leather belt. Uh, anything else? I think we're good. Is this hardcore or sod? Neither. It's neither. It's exactly what the title says. It's exactly what the logo says. You know, hardcore has a logo, sod has a logo. I am using the logo and the titling that describes exactly what we're doing. What can I help you with? You know, you know, I can, I can maybe add a little bit to the, the uh, description to make it a bit more clear. Uh, in this series, we'll level as a human warrior in World of Warcraft Classic's vanilla era. Uh, on the Classic Era Mancrick server. This will be... Mancrick server, which I believe is US East. Okay, yeah, that's really as clear as I can make it. World of Warcraft Classic Era Classic, the most vanilla stream. Yeah, I don't think I can make it any more clear. That's really all I can do. Light bless you. It's up to people now to read and use their eyes. Need help? Be careful for the Alliance. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, that's not passive. No, that's not passive aggressiveness. No, no, no. If that, if that's passive, even passive aggressiveness, then people are really soft. That's not passive. What I just did wasn't passive aggressiveness. It was maybe a snide. A snide would be a little bit better of a word. It was maybe a little bit snide of me, but it wasn't passive aggressiveness. Not even remotely. <laughs> I think sn snide is the word you're looking for. Light be with you. Go with honor. Friend. Isn't there a reroll event on Defias Pillager, uh, the hardcore server? If there's a reroll event, it would be like an individual streamer's or like some personality's reroll event. There there's no official reroll event. But like may maybe there's some popular streamer who's doing something with their community. I'm not sure. I don't I don't follow any other like WoW streamers, so. How many, how many players have I seen? You heard Classic Era was dead. You heard wrong. I've seen a handful of people and it's fine. <laughs> I've seen a handful of people and it's fine. Look, there's a warlock right there. It's the middle of the day on a Friday. Like, I don't expect to see a ton of people. I do a slash who. I got 17 people in Northshire Abbey or Elwyn Forest with me, so I I'm good. I'm cool with that. There is a there's a cell phone setting for hardcore that you can do. You can opt in to be a cell phone character. It's not it's not technically solo cell phone. They don't limit grouping, but they limit uh, your use of the mailbox, trading, and the auction house is cut off. Everything is dead if you're not playing it. Yeah, yeah, Alex, exactly. Everything is dead if you're not playing it. Right, right, right. Especially when it comes to WoW. Someone's like, I'm not playing that version of WoW. I heard that was dead. Well, I mean, tell that to the tons of people that are still enjoying that version of WoW. It's, it's not dead to them. There we go, there's some, uh, some male pants. Asmodin, thanks for being here, man, I appreciate that. Face, I'm glad I could be of assistance in that way. I have a lot of people tell me that. And I definitely understand, like, problems going to sleep. When I'm trying to get to sleep, I turn on uh, Christopher Odd's Dome Keeper series. Yeah, I turn on some Dome Keeper. Like, the, the lighting and, like, the, the ambience are, are chill enough to help me get back to sleep if I'm having trouble. You miss those misses in retail? Yeah, in retail, you're not really, like, your your white swings don't really matter. Like, there really is no, like, auto attack stuff. Yeah, which, which is its own thing. There's so You have so many buttons to push in retail, like, you don't need your auto attack. I like auto attack. But I'm an old person, and I'm kind of lazy, so... 
for me, if I can have a rotation or a build that has just like overall like slightly less buttons, then I'm typically happier. Like what's my like what's my favorite zone in the game like aesthetically um i have a few of them probably my favorite zone in the game overall would be uh the blood elf starting areas eversong woods but in classic era classic probably elwyn forest mulgore ashenvale ashenvale is amazing the music there is incredible uh, even teldrassil although the questing in teldrassil is rough like the aesthetics in teldrassil are awesome but in the game it, overall like throughout time probably eversong woods I remember when they said they were doing the ability prune, but then like it seemed like even when they did the ability prune, we then got so many abilities. Shortly after the ability prune, they gave us all the abilities back and then some. And that's how classes ended up with like six different cooldowns to keep track of. Now you have like a 30 second cooldown, a 45 second cooldown, two one minute cooldowns, three three minute cooldowns, uh, five ten second cooldowns. It's like that's a that's a lot of cooldowns. But thanks for giving me abilities back, I guess. Lock, Modan, Dunmaro. So, so many zones are great. Like, it's... It's easier to, like, point out the zones that I don't like that much. And, like, there, there aren't many of them. But the, zone, the zones that I don't like are the ones that are supposed to make you uncomfortable as a player. Like, places like Searing Gorge. Eastern Plaguelands, Western Plaguelands, like, the places that I don't enjoy being in are the places that are supposed to make you, like, super uncomfortable as a player of the game. Desolus, although Desolus has some interesting parts in it, like, yeah, Desolus overall is meh, but there are a couple of really, like, interesting parts that are very unique. Like, over on the coast is pretty interesting, and then there's, like, the demonic area. <laughs> well, when you put it that way, that does sound pretty gross, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend drinking the water by the centaurs places, yeah. I, th I think they follow the water over there. I don't think they're, like, too sanitary. Well, Plague Lands is cool, but it's not like a, we're, we're talking about, like, beautiful zones. Like, just gorgeous zones to be in. Lael, did I make a decision on Dragon's Dogma 2? Yes, I'm not, I'm not gonna play it. I, I purchased it. I purchased it. I went to download it. The download was was broken, obviously, because like when you download stuff through Steam, like a million people are trying to download it all at once. They didn't do a preload. I uh, I then went and I watched uh, I watched Co Carnage play an hour of it, and not not even quite an hour, like 38 minutes of it. And by the end of watching him play 38 minutes, my only thought was, "Ew, I'm gonna have to play through that too if I am gonna play this game." I just, like, I didn't really like what I saw. I thought that the color palette was incredibly drab. Even when he gets out into, like, he got out in, like, outdoor areas with trees and plant life, everything seemed like it was put through, like, a washed-out filter. Like, someone took all the colors and then they just, they just wrung all the colors out of the world. And, yeah, it just... I just didn't want to play it. It, it turned out it, I just wasn't going to play it. So, so I refunded it. I, I owned it for about seven minutes. And, you know, with all the with all the talk about how bad it runs on PC and, and stuff like that, and then like getting a look at like the game in action and not really liking what I saw, I think like not playing it was the best move. The character creator is the best part. Yeah, it could be. I did I did go into the character creator and I made my character and stuff, and that was okay. 
Even, even when I checked my graphic settings in the character creator, it, it already said I was surpassing like what they what they recommended. It was like, oh, oh, you're past nine gigs of virtual memory. You're in the red. And I'm like, how can I be in the red? It's the character creator. What's the game gonna run like if I'm already in the red? It was uh, it was really silly. And, and I decided it would be okay for me to skip it. Like, there, there are honestly games that have been out for a while that I would, if I was going to spend time, like, playing a different game, I, I would probably go play Elden Ring. Uh, there's a game coming out in April that's called No Rest for the Wicked that, that feels like, a, it feels like an isometric Dark Souls, and that game looks really cool. So yeah, there, there are just other games that, like, if I'm going to play another game right now, I just don't think it was going to be, going to be Dragon's Dogma 2. Also, also, it really felt like, you know, for Dragon's Dogma 2, from what little I saw, it felt like you, you really want to know the story and lore from the first one. It, it seemed like you really just, like, needed to know some of the story, some of the lore, some of the world from, from the first one to really get, like, the full experience out of it. I never played the first one. So, yeah, it, it just didn't seem like a good idea for me to try to play it right now. Yeah, it had bad optimization. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. All I all I kept reading was how much of like uh, how much of like it just wants like to suck all the power out of your system, but then still run like ass. And so you know, my system's okay. Like I built it last year, but I didn't spend five thousand dollars building it. So. Part 2 is, a, is like a retake on the story, so you can ignore the first one. That's cool and everything, but like... I don't know, they were talking about pawns, and arisen, and awoken, and they were throwing all these like proper nouns out that I didn't know. And I was just thinking like, man, it really, it really feels like they expect me to know a little bit about the lore and about things in it. And I don't know anything. I don't know what a pawn is, or what an, or what an arisen is, or any of that stuff. So it, it got into that stuff like right away. Without, without really like a lot of like in-game explanation of like what it was, I guess. I don't know. Mainly, you know what really turned me off well, most was how the game looked. I'm just gonna be completely honest. I watched 38 minutes of gameplay. The game looked drab. It, it looked washed out. The colors were not vibrant. The environments didn't seem vibrant. I, it might feel different to play it, but just as something that I was gonna look at for a long time, it, it was not visually interesting to me. It looked very drab. The environments seemed like like two, the environments all seem to have two colors. It's either brown and gray, or it's green and gray, or it's gray and black. It it just really like wasn't doing it for me. For the alliance. And, and if I didn't even want to watch more of it, there was really no way that I was going to have the effort to play a bunch of it. Like, I didn't even want to watch more than the 38 minutes I watched. I, I skipped around through, like, some later gameplay to see if the environments got better, and from what I saw, they looked like the same washed-out kinds of environments I saw right away. So, yeah. It's okay. I can, I can miss it, and it can be an amazing game for the people that like it, and, and I don't have to play it. And like I said, if, if I'm going to play a game like that, I still have to play Elden Ring. I, ideally, I have to play Elden Ring before the DLC comes out in June. So if I am going to spend any time playing something that's not World of Warcraft, I would probably play some Elden Ring right now.
And and with Elden Ring, like I know Elden Ring run, runs great on my rig. I know Elden Ring looks really good. I know that the color palette is vibrant. Uh, I know that the world feels alive. Like I already know a lot of things about Elden Ring, uh, just because I've owned it since it came out. Mainly, I know that it runs great and looks great on my rig. This warrior is just a vanilla era warrior. So this is like, this is a vanilla era server. Uh, we're not doing hardcore, we're not doing self-found, we are just going to play the game. So however I get gear, I can get gear. We can get it from dungeons, we can get it from the auction house, we can get it from, uh, from anywhere. I do have a bunch of, I do have a bunch of gold on this server, actually. So if, if I, if I, I have a bunch of gold from, you know where my gold is from? My gold on this server is from hardcore characters that have died with gold. And then, like, I sent them here. Also, the level 47 hardcore pally that we did back on Blood Cell Buccaneers. When Blizz offered free transfers off that server, I transferred him here with his gold. So I have his gold. I have the gold that we lost on the 39 dwarf paladin. And I had some gold from some other characters that got sent here. So I do have a little bit of gold if I want it. I I'm kind of, I'm kind of, like, saving the gold for my mount. To be honest, I, I might I might cheat on that because I'm not I'm not trying to do a self found run. I'm not trying to play hardcore. I am just trying to enjoy some good old fashioned vanilla without any of the class changes, without any modifiers, without without any runes, without any waylaid supplies, w without any of that stuff. I did earn that gold, and I had to lose it in a really sad way at the time. I remember when the 39 Pally fell off the boat and died, she had like 29 gold. It was, it was horrible. I forgot to put some abilities on the action bar. That's not a surprise. Yeah, I probably have charge and stuff. And look at that. I'm just like auto attacking away. Uh, I can probably move auto attack away. Let's get some other action bars going. Let's do that. Pop this up here. There we go. I appreciate that. I could. I was. I was gonna go to level six before I checked. Yeah, it's a good time to jump back into vanilla. I'm, like for me especially, like I'm, I'm kind of just I'm between like I'm between things right now. There's there's just not really a lot that I want to do that's different. I, I don't really want to play any sod. I I've basically decided that I, with with going into Kata, I'm gonna take a blood elf warrior and I'm gonna take my blood elf paladin. So I, I have my characters for Cataclysm. Well, I can't level the I can't level the blood elf warrior up yet. I gotta wait for pre patch on the blood elf warrior. And, uh, and yeah. There's not really any point for me to play- I could play Wrath and I, I could farm up some heirlooms. Like, I could do that. I don't know if it's gonna be necessary or not. Uh, besides that, I don't really have any other things going on. So it's kind of the perfect time just to, like, kick back and play some vanilla era vanilla without, like, without hardcore stakes or anything like that and just enjoy the game. Enjoy the game in its, in its best- in its best version. In my opinion. John, good afternoon, man. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, we're we're running some add-ons. Yeah, I'm not I'm not doing I'm not doing uh I'm not doing add-on free. So I do have some add-ons going. Like we have Questy going, I could take it or leave it. We got Bagnon going, like Mainly I I've, I've got Questy and Bagnon going. And I could I could I could take or leave Questy. I'd probably keep Bagnon. So I'm not really trying to do like add-on free. I, w I was doing add-on free in the solo cell found as like a difficulty modifier. The thing I'll say, if, if I find myself staring at my minimap a lot again, then I will probably turn questy tracking off. But as long as I don't feel like I'm fixating on my minimap, I'll, pro I'll probably just leave it on. And Bagnon, I just, I just kind of want to have Bagnon, you know? I, th I thought about doing it add-on free, but I'm just trying to have a chill time and, and play the game. 
It's easy. It's easier for me to hang out and chat if, if I don't have to think like too much about where I'm supposed to go or what I'm supposed to be doing. The, and there will be less backtracking because I, I find that the thing I do without Questy, I forget to pick up Quest. Like it's not even about finding the quest. I, I know where all the objectives are at. Uh, the biggest thing is like I will I will run out of town without picking quest up because I, I don't see the pickups marked. And then that's not really adding like challenge, that just is causing like backtracking as I have to like run back and forth to the same areas. Cause I'm just not picking everything up. And th and that's more of a distraction issue than anything else. That's like Robert getting distracted, Robert not picking up all the quests because he didn't see them. I was kind of hoping if, if I kept killing these guys for a bit that they would drop a bag. That's That's been kind of my goal here. Uh, I'm going to fight them until either my inventory is full or until they drop a bag for me. I, I don't know if I'm going to use any of my gold to kind of help myself as I level up. I, I might do like mostly like self-sufficient stuff bes besides the mount. I'd like to just... I have about... 60 or 70 gold on this server now, and I, I'd like to just save all of it to help out with the mount. I don't really want to spend it on like bags and gear and stuff like that. Alex says, I would have sent myself 14 slot bags. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair, man. That would probably be a really good idea. Yeah, like, I, I probably should, like, send myself some bags. So, like, if I don't find any bags, and if I start having, like, inventory issues, I will send myself a few bags for next time. And depending on how much they cost, because I, I don't mind helping the character out a little bit. I just don't want to spend a lot of that gold. I, I, I really want to keep the gold for mount money. To supplement, like, whatever I don't have at that point. Why do I start new tunes all the time? Because I'm a horrible person. Yeah. I'm just a bad person. That's all. But more but more than that. <laughs> but more than the fact that I'm just a bad, lazy scumbag. Uh, if you think about the kinds of content that I played on the channel, you would know that like a lot of the recent content has been Season of Discovery, which caps characters at a low level and that the rest of the recent content has been hardcore wherein I get characters killed all the time so those are other reasons but mainly just because I, I probably enjoy the game for different reasons than you do but a lot of it is just like the types of game I've been playing recently has obviously limited progress and then limited progress in the sense that I die a lot in hardcore that's, that's basically it Like, I, I have the max level characters that I want to have. I have my Shaman, and my Mage, and my Warlock in Retail. I have two Paladins in Wrath of the Lich King. I have my level 40 Paladin on standby in Sod, waiting for the Sod level band to open up to 50 so I can cap her again and let her sit again. Uh, and that's it. I, I have the endgame characters I want, and the rest of them are Sod and Hardcore tunes.
Yeah, also, like, if, like, so let's say I only play one character, like, okay. That'd be pretty boring. Especially considering all the different versions of WoW that exist. O only playing one character would also mean limiting myself to only one version of the game. So, yeah. Like, in like, honestly, like, I, I, I'm not here to like, do like, cutting edge endgame content. That's never been my goal with the game. Uh, it's never been my playstyle, and I've always been really open about that. There are plenty of places on the internet that are gonna be like, a better resource for like, cutting edge endgame content, no matter what version of WoW you prefer. Like, that's not really gonna be something that this channel focuses on. Even when I do endgame stuff, it's not the focus. Like, you know, when we do, like, we did a bunch of gamma dungeons in Wrath of the Lich King. Like, that's endgame stuff. But, you know, we did that here and there when it was fun, and... It's just not the kind of thing that I'm gonna do every day forever. The same is true with, like, raiding. Like, when I do raid, I raid while it's fun. When it stops being fun, I stop doing it. See... BFD in Season of Discovery. I, I did it, like, four times. I, I didn't really have a ton of fun any of the times I did it, and so I stopped doing it. They, they haven't really, like, it's been a long time since there's been an endgame that I've really, really, really cared about. It, it's definitely more about the journey. Yeah, the game in its entirety, like, there is no entirety, the game keeps going, you know. I, I don't- I don't have to see every single speck of content or farm raids on a weekly basis to feel like I'm getting, like, my worth out of the game. I- I had a long time in my life where I had an amazing raiding guild, and we raided, like, three times a week, and we raided for four hours a night. Like, I had that time in my life, where I raid logged, and that was, like, all that I did, was I got on and I raided. Um, and yeah, and that was fun. I had a great group of people. I had a lot of fun doing it. It was a time in my life that went on for years and years, and then that time ended. And then I, like, after that, I never really cared about Endgame in the same way. Like, the last time I was seriously raiding was at, like, the beginning of Legion. They introduced the endless AP grind, and I didn't have time for that, and that was when I, when I fell out with the Endgame. When Mythic 5-mans became like the only challenging 5-man content, that was also like another nail in the coffin for me really caring about the endgame, because I don't like Mythic, I don't like time trials, I don't like rushing things. And so just the way the game changed over time, it, it took me from being a player that cared about the endgame to being a character that couldn't- being a player that couldn't be bothered about the endgame. And I'll always give it a chance, just like with Wrath, you know, I got two characters to max level. I dabbled in raids, I dabbled in Gamma, like I dabbled in some of the hardest content that I could get into as a solo player. And, you know, I had the fun that I had, and then I stopped. The same will happen in Season of Discovery at level 60. We'll get to level 60, we'll, we'll do some of the endgame stuff at level 60. I'll, I'll probably do it a few times, and then I'll probably get bored of it. Invent inventory is almost full. <laughs> we, we have not gotten any bags yet, but the inventory is almost full, and then we'll head back to town. You know, and maybe there will be a version of the game again someday where I care about Endgame. Maybe, maybe it will be War Within. Maybe they will have some activities, some solo player stuff that I find super engaging that I actually care about. But so far, like, it, it hasn't happened yet.
we, you know, with, with the exception of Vanilla Era, I have tried the end game content in every version of the game. So it's not like I've missed out. <laughs> Keep it keep in mind, especially with classic, like I, I did all those raids back in my twenties. Like, especially Wrath of the Lich King. Like that was like the heyday of my raiding. That was when we were raiding the most. So when it came to doing Wrath of the Lich King endgame again, like I just didn't want to do it. I'd done all the raids a bazillion times. It, I did I did Nax three times and I did Ulduar once. And I thought, yep, I don't I don't need to do these raids anymore. I've already did them. I, I have all my memories of doing them because I was in my 20s when I did them. Am I going to level this warrior to 60? We will see. According to some people, I won't. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'd like to just keep this character. And then whenever, whenever there's downtime, whenever there's like a lull like we have right now, like we're between phases, we're between releases, I would ve really very much like to just play Vanilla Era. Um, you know, without the stress of having to have it be hardcore or having to make up all these other modifiers, I I'd really like to just be able to play Vanilla Era whenever we don't have other stuff going on. Like, right now is a good example. We're, I, I'm waiting on the next phase of Sod, I'm waiting on the Cataclysm pre-patch, I'm waiting on getting access to the War Within beta. And so I'd love for this character just to stick around and become a staple on the channel. A as something we can do, like, whenever. I've also been enjoying having, like, not one long stream, but having two different streams in during the day. And, like, doing it that way, that allows me to, like, kind of do more, you know? Hey we, we can we can be progressing something else, but we can still touch base with this character every day if we want to. See you around. And so I, I've been trying to go more in that direction where I stream a little bit earlier, but then we take a midday break and then we come back for like an afternoon stream. Uh, let's grab the one hand mace, or or we could do the sword, I guess. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's do the sword. Have a good one. Safe travels. See you later. Am I planning to do dungeons? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. You know, since it's not hardcore, since we're not restricted to doing one dungeon a day, there's no lockouts or anything like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll do I dungeons, do definitely. Uh, I should be able to tank most of them, but we'll see how that goes. Light bless you. Yeah, that's the good thing about it not being hardcore and not having modifiers. Is that I'm actually comfortable, like, just running dungeons. Ah, uh, this is going back to Millie. Uh, we hit level 6. Maybe I ought to train level 6. Yeah, no, no fear of death, but also on, on the official hardcore servers, there there is a lockout on the dungeons, so like you can't just do them back to back. Like it's a 24-hour lockout, so if you do dead mines today, you're not doing dead mines again until tomorrow. And like a lot of times, you know, you you go through the effort to put a group together, you get everybody at the dungeon. Uh, it's nice in classic era to be able to run a dungeon like twice while you're out there with a group. Like, I don't want to, like, spam them again ever back-to-back -back the way we did with Season of Discovery, but it is it is nice to, like, have a good group together to do the run once and then say, hey, uh, do you guys want to go again? And on the official hardcore servers, you, you can't do that. Even if you're not afraid of dying, you can't do it. Yes, because some people don't live long enough to do them back-to-back, -back. exactly. Have a good one. But there's also just a lockout. Safe travels. I, I I swear to God, guys, that uh, that vanilla era leveling is faster than what goes on right now in the Cataclysm beta. Maybe it's like maybe it's an illusion because I'm, I'm having a better time, but it, it just it feels like like from remembering the Cata beta leveling like early on, it feels like we level so much faster and so much more smoothly just back in vanilla era. It's pretty strange.
Yeah, I, I think it took what it took three hours to get to level ten on the on the warrior in the catabeta. So we'll see we'll see how long it takes us to get this character to level ten, and then we'll have a, a better basis of comparison. I, I guess that it'll take about the same amount of time, probably about three hours of gameplay. This is the Mancrick server, classic era Mancrick server, which is uh, US East. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they have the experience gains uh, in the beta the way that they're supposed to be. That was kind of another reason why I, I, I don't want to play any more of the beta right now. I, I might wait on playing more of the beta until they allow us to check out, like, the new areas. But there's, like, so much, there's so much not complete with the, with the beta right now. Like, even the Night Elf eyes, like, their eyes don't even glow. There's, like, very fundamental things about the beta that are simply completely broken right now. And and one of those things I think is the the XP gains are just not what they want them to be, um, and, and who knows when that stuff will get updated. So I, I don't really want to spend too much time leveling up in the in the Cata beta just to have to turn around and do it again once pre patch comes out anyway. Mana on the priest was bad in the Kata in Kata. Yeah, that could be because they kind of got rid of wanding. Like on a priest in vanilla era, you're mainly going to be doing like a lot of wanding. You're going to be what I like to call a melee caster. So you're going to open with like mind blast or whatever, and then you're going to throw up shadow word pain, and then you're going to bubble yourself, and then you're going to wand the enemy down. But I heard that by Kata, like wands are basically useless, and that's a big problem for priests. Cause like, yeah, I ideally you want to get level 5 and then you just wand everything to death. And then you just go, 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 and then, and then you never run out of mana. You go into spirit tap and then like, even when you cast with spirit tap, you're just getting all your mana back anyway. These guys have still not dropped a, a bag for me. That's pretty rude. I'm, I'm gonna grind on these guys for a little bit more and, and just see, it, I, I don't mind buying myself bags I guess, but if we can get like one or two bags to drop then I would be good for a while. 
As far as professions on this character, I think I'm gonna do Herbalism Alchemy. I, I really like my warriors to have Herbalism Alchemy. And it's one of the few uh, professions that I'm actually... I, I've proven able to level it up. Whereas every time I do Blacksmithing Mining, like, I, I never keep it leveled up. I never end up leveling it properly. So yeah, I, I think we'll do Herbalism Alchemy. That way I can have my own elixirs and stuff. I do have to go kill Garrick Padfoot again. Let's go do that. Inventory is full. It did not take very long for it to happen. This stream seems pretty vanilla. It's it's incredibly vanilla. You need something? It's almost as vanilla as you can get. See you around. It's as vanilla as you're gonna get. See you later. You could say that like true vanilla, I would disable all add-ons. And then maybe that would be like as vanilla as a human being could get, but it's it, as for like a stream on YouTube, it's probably the most vanilla that you're gonna get. I feel like it's accurately titled. How are you? See you around. See you later.
Hey there. Safe travel. Hello. Have a good one. Safe travels. Oh. The resolution should be 800 by 600. That's fair, yeah. That would be that would be incredibly vanilla. Yeah, it had to be letterboxed. Yeah, we'd have to letterbox it. We we could um let's see. We we could go into the render scaling and we could just turn the render scaling all the way down. And then this would be like more like what some of us got to actually play back in like 2004, 2005. It would be it would be more like this. Now it's about as vanilla as you can get. That being said, this looks absolutely atrocious. So, yeah. <laughs> we are not going to do that. Crank that bad boy back up to 200%. Yeah, you could do that. You could turn the render scale down. You could turn the old water effects on. You'd have to turn shadows off because in original classic, there were no shadows. I remember in Burning Crusade when they put shadows into the game and my PC decided it did not like running this game anymore. And I immediately had to go turn all my shadows off. But yeah, before Burning Crusade, there, there were like no real like shadows the way we see shadows in the game now. See you later. I think characters had like a little blurb under them, but like as far as like the detailed shadows, they didn't exist. Alex, it looked like you didn't have your glasses on for a minute. Yeah, 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 that's what my vision's like without my glasses too. That's how I see the world too. Life be with you. Go with honor, friend. For the Alliance. What can I do for you? Be careful. Like, yeah, there, there's people on, like, Goldshire is not, like, it's not popping off, right? But there's people on, there's lots of people playing the game. You need something? Have a good one. I, I wonder if, like, the people that primarily play Classic Era, if they, if they play for, like, similar reasons. Like, they just, they don't really, like, get into Sod. Maybe they don't really, maybe they don't think they're gonna play Cataclysm, and so maybe that's why they're hanging out in Classic Era. I'm kind of curious as to like individual people's motivations for playing Classic Era. Like I know what mine are, but I just I'm curious about other people's. What can I do for you? Let's remember to set the Hearthstone here. How are you? See you around. See you later. 
Good day to you. See you around. Let's learn first aid upstairs. Let's learn cooking and first aid. Hey there. Safe travel. Hey there. What's my favorite class in WoW? You're probably you're probably looking at it. Yeah, my favorite class in WoW is probably the Vanilla Warrior. See you around. It's close between the Vanilla Warrior and the Vanilla Pally. It, it, it would be close. It's, it's hard to say. Maybe they're neck and neck. I should I should learn herbalism. There's an herbalism trainer like somewhere here in the mountains. Uh, let's see. Turn those off. Let's turn on herbalism and alchemy. Yeah, I, I think we can. We're gonna go there. Maybe I should have already made my way there. Hmm. All right. We'll we'll do some of the stuff down here on the farm. But yeah, ideally I should have already. Nah, it's gonna bother me. Let's just go ahead and we'll go grab herbalism. Otherwise, it's gonna annoy me that we don't have it. And we'll, we'll just fight some stuff along the way. Alex, you're curious how effed the economy is on this server? We, we can find out. Whenever we get to Stormwind, we will... we'll see. Do you think it's gonna be, like, really messed up? We have a couple of things we can look for. Like, we know that, like, the, the Shining Silver Breastplate usually sells between, like, 4 and 8 gold. So we'll take a look at the Shining Silver Breastplate. And we'll see how much those are going for. What else do we know, like, the average decent price of? Yeah, besides the Shining Silver Breastplate, like, I, I can't think of any items that I know off the top of my head, like, what their average, like, decent price is. I'm hoping the economy will just be okay. That would be cool. Yeah, it's hard it's hard to have high hopes for a good economy. I'm hoping it's just decent. To to some extent, like supply and demand usually work themselves out. Obviously if if people have been buying lots of gold, then that could inflate matters. But we'll definitely check it out. Oh, there's an alchemist here too, that's awesome. Hello. Have well a good met. one. 
There we go. Light bless you. Uh, let's turn on tracking for herbs. And now we start picking flowers. There should be less bots because it's less played. Um, yeah. Less play- we're, we're, assu we're assuming it's less played, yeah, because the server population is, is lower, but... Uh, also, though, like, the other thing is that the server has been around for a long time. So it's like, it's an older server at this point. I'm not really sure how, like, how its age is gonna be a factor, but it might be a factor. I'm hoping, if anything, prices will be low. Obviously, like, that's the dream. That's the dream for the consumer. Not so much for the people trying to sell stuff, but yeah, I, I hope for lower prices. Was that level 7? Level 7. Okay, cool. Nether weave bags for 200 gold on retail. Isn't isn't 200 gold in retail though? Like 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 two gold. I feel like in retail you get so much gold. I feel like 200 gold in retail is the equivalent to like one or two gold in like Wrath of the Lich King. Maybe that's like not a great comparison. We're back to this. Which pizza is the best pizza? Any any pizza that has pizza sauce on it. Any pizza that's actually a pizza is the best pizza. It just as long as it has pizza sauce and cheese. Don't don't bring your barbecue sauce pizza around here. Guys, how are the sound effects in relation to the music? Are the sound effects a little bit too loud? Like, for those of you guys that are that have the stream on to like chill and to relax, uh, like, are the sound effects too loud? Are the sound effects for combat like kind of annoying? I'm, I'm gonna crank them down just a tiny bit. That that feels better. They were- they were fine? Okay. Are they too quiet now? <laughs> I bumped them down 5%. Yeah, I bumped them down a tiny bit. Maybe- maybe they are a little too quiet now. 
still okay. I'm, I'm gonna leave him like this for now. It's, it's enough for you to be able to hear that I'm in combat and to hear what's going on, like if you're not looking at the screen, but it's not it's not too loud in its like repetitive nature. Yeah, uh, yeah, the device will matter to some extent, sure. Like, when I do my daily sound test, I, I listen on my TV, which has a, uh, a sound bar. So that's how I do, like, my daily sound. I can hear it while I'm playing it, obviously, and then I, I listen to a little bit of it later on. To make sure it sounds good, like, on the sound bar on the TV. There are so many people playing that somebody is stealing my herbs. I can't believe it. How rude. I did I didn't call tag on it. I didn't call dibs. So that that one's on me. If there are enough people playing in the middle of the day that people can steal my herbs, then there there are enough people playing. Oh, Dunmoro has more herbalism nodes than like any other starting zone. Oh yeah, we're, we're definitely gonna go to Dunmoro. Pro probably around level 8 or 9, we'll jump over to Dunmoro. And yeah, the, the herbalism opportunities there are, are boundless. They, they have so many- you wouldn't think so. It's like the opposite of what you would expect. You would think Teldrassil would have more than anybody else, but they don't. Dunmoro does. I think Dunmoro Dun Moro might have more like of all nodes. It might it might have more mining opportunities and more herbalism opportunities. More so than any of the other starting zones. Yeah, I, I'm okay if the game is a little bit loud compared to me. As long as the game sounds are not like completely drowning me out, then I'm okay with it. They look okay. When I look at the levels, they look okay. You need something? Have a good one. Day to you. See you later. Well met. Be careful. Yeah, you would think that. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind, I'm kind of obsessive about my sound, though. And also, the other day, I had to install Logitech G Hub, and the good old G Hub, it took over like all of my peripherals. So I, I, I had to rebuild my sound profile from like the ground up, and I had to mess with a bunch of settings that I, I wasn't used to having to mess with, like the deesser and the depopper and all this stuff that like I had not messed with before. So yeah, especially after having to build up my sound settings from the ground up, I'm like 
really particular. I usually check like throughout the stream. I like to get different people's opinions on it because I'm uh, I'm a little bit obsessive about it. Hey there. Safe travels. Maybe I can borrow somebody's fire and do a little bit of cooking. It would be nice to have a little bit of food. I, I can't I can't cook the boar meat though. I wonder if she has a fire in there. It looks like it. I'm not gonna take skinning. I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on herbalism and alchemy. There is a case to be made for taking skinning and and herbalism like early on, and then doing a bunch of skinning, building up all your herbs, and eventually dropping skinning and taking alchemy. Like that is definitely a thing that would be smart to do. Uh, I have a little bit of gold on this server, so I'm not like super worried about it. But I think I'm just gonna keep herbalism alchemy all the way. It does hurt sometimes, though, to kill a bunch of enemies and to leave their bodies on the ground. Like, I, I'm used to having skinning. But I'm not gonna take it this time around. I wish someone else would come by and skin all this stuff, though. That would make me feel slightly better. Maybe one day we'll get a season of professions. And they'll just let people take as many professions as they want. That'd be cool. It'd be nice to be able to do all the professions like like in uh, New World. And then just like fully support all of your own endeavors. 
if you want to. But I feel like if everybody was able to take all professions, they'd probably have to increase the amount of nodes that spawn. Because then you'd have so many more people hunting for herbs, so many more people hunting for ore, that they'd have to really increase that a lot. But I think it'd be a really cool idea for a season. Season of crafting. Season of survival crafting. Add some survival- since they- since they canned their survival game, Blizzard, like, they cancelled their survival game. They should take some of those people and put them on, like, a seasonal development team for Classic, and they can do a season of survival craft. That'd be cool. Good day to you. See you later. Safe travels. What's, what's this Knoll doing over here? He, he's a little bit far from where I expect to see Knolls. He's, he's wandered over into this area. I don't think I've ever noticed Knolls over here. It's just this one guy. He must be like the advanced scout. Hello. See you around. Have a good one. Safe travels. Travels. Into the mine we go. A 
Justin, good afternoon, man. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. When am I going to do more episodes on the Worgen character? That's a good question. I might be waiting until until uh, pre-patch. The beta is so full of bugs. And for the content that I want to make, like seeing all the story stuff play out, seeing the cutscenes play out, hearing the dialogue play out, like... I, I don't think that the, the bug-ridden beta is going to be a good place for it, unfortunately. Like, first I was stuck in an area that didn't have water for multiple days, but then uh, besides that, when, when events play out and when dialogue plays out, it's all buggy. You can't listen to it or really enjoy it in any way. And there's gonna be a lot of story stuff that plays out as we, like, go into Gilneas and, like, eventually, like, you know, lose that battle, everything plays out. I, I think I want to wait until pre-patch. Which I know sucks for some people, but I, I think, like, for the content to actually be, like, even the least bit immersive and focusing on the story and stuff, like, I, I can't do it with a bunch of bugs. Yeah, I, li I like the Worgen areas a lot. I played them back in the day, but obviously I didn't read all the quests and stuff, so I don't really remember a lot. But I, I would like to experience them, like, in, in their in their done-done state. And so I, I don't think for, like, trying to do a recorded series, like, the beta is the best place to do it. For some reason, like, when I started it, I thought they were going to have it much further along than they did. We, we kind of quickly found out that uh, the beta is in rough shape. Like, it needs a lot of testing. It needs a lot of work. And, you know, I didn't expect that for some reason. I, I thought it would be, like, a decent shape and things would relatively be working, but the way they've had to kind of cobble the, the game client together, like, nothing really works. There are so many instances, like, of, like, repetitious NPC, like, dialogue. Like, one person's, like, everyone's talking to the NPC, and the dialogue just stacks and stacks and stacks and repeats and repeats and repeats, and, like, you can't enjoy it or listen to it or at all. Like, so, yeah, I, that, that one's on hiatus for now. I have an episode two of the Goblin playthrough that I've never, I haven't even published. I've been holding on to it for multiple days because, uh, same thing with the Warg, and like, I don't think I'm going to continue the Goblin stuff until we're actually in, uh, until we're actually in beta. So, like, when something happens, I, I want it to be clear, like, what happened, and not just like, oh, there was a little bug, and apparently Deathwing was supposed to have flown by. Goldtooth could kill me here, like, very, depending on how the crits play out, depending on how the hits play out, he could definitely kill me. Uh, I, I do have a potion, okay, ah, well, he ran, oh, I kind of wasted the potion there. Uh, nope, I didn't waste the potion because now we have to take care of this guy. Mike, thanks for being here, man. Is this classic era classic? Like classic classic? This is classic era vanilla classic classic vanilla classic classic. Yeah, this is the most vanilla classic that you're gonna get. Mm-hmm. Which is to say it's classic. And not Wrath Classic or Cata Classic or Hardcore Classic or Season of Discovery Classic or Season of Mastery Classic or Solo Self Found Classic. Um it's just classic. Classic classic. That's it. Re relatively pure classic. I guess you could make an argument for the fact that since I'm using a couple of add-ons, since I'm running like three add-ons that it's not it's not like its most pristine form but it is the it's probably the most classic stream that you're gonna find on YouTube you're probably not gonna find like a more classic stream on YouTube than this one so in that sense it's accurate 
Like I'm using Questy, we got Bagnon, but that's it. We don't we don't even have immersion running. Like we don't have a lot of add-ons going at all. Very, very like low-key add-ons. This is gonna kill us. This is gonna be death number one. Maybe, maybe I could just run away. What are the what are the odds that I can leash this guy? Oh no, no. <laughs> uh, the odds that I can leash this guy are not very good. Uh, let's see, what's- the, oh, no, no, we're gonna run into trouble this way, too. Oh, yeah. Now- now it's just about picking a spot where we die- oh, another player! Please help me! Oh. <laughs> I'm sure he feels bad. I'm sure- I'm sure he feels bad for not helping me. What was the last time that I was allowed to do a spirit run in Classic Era? Probably a season of mastery. No plus, no bells, no whistles. Yeah, no, no modifiers. Oh god, we're all the way up here. Um, I wonder if it's. Uh, no, probably not. Let's just do the spirit run. Yeah, he just he had to get that node. Yeah, yeah, he was probably like mad at me for dragging those mobs over. He's like, oh, I'm gonna get aggroed by these mobs. There was no way he's gonna help me. It feels bad mining while crying. Yeah, I'm sure he felt super bad for us. If it was if it was hardcore, he probably would have helped me. You know, that's what I have to tell myself. Can I can I res up through the ground? I can res up through the ground. I will I will take that. Yeah, let let's let's take that. That's fine. Now we can fight on the outside. We already have the uh, necklace, so we don't need to worry about gold tooth. We don't even have to be in the mine anymore. You think the mobs went after him once we died? They probably did. They probably did. Then again, then again, aggro is not as broken in classic era as it is in season of discovery. Like, if it were Season of Discovery, then I'd say yes, 100%, like, those mobs went after him as soon as we died. But, like, with it being vanilla era, like, classic server, like, uh, maybe they maybe they reset properly. It's hard to say. Am I gonna go arms or fury spec? I think I'm gonna do like a fury spec. I think I'm gonna do like a two-handed, a two-handed fury spec. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm gonna go with the arms, like the bleed damage stuff that we normally do. I think I'm gonna go like full crit and just go into go into fury and just kind of maybe plan on doing like maybe I don't know if I'll dual wield right away. Like I don't know. I kind of want to do like a two-handed fury build. Don't know if it's viable. We'll uh, we'll get into the talents in a little while, and we'll look at the talents and uh, kind of go from there. Uh, yeah, but I, I would like to do something a little bit different. And then if I go Fury, then I have the option of dual wielding later on. But I would I would really rather just use a two hander. If for my, for me like like a warrior to me is either like sword and board or it's a it's a two hander. Hello. I, I I have not often dual wielded on warriors. Have a good one. See you around. Uh, what did we get? We got some leather gloves. Not as good as what we have. Two-handed mace in the form of a shovel. Uh, I don't know. I think I might need to go to Iron Forge to learn two-handed maces. I don't think I have any two-hand skill. I don't. I have I have all my one hand skill. I got axes, maces, and swords. We gotta we gotta go around and learn some two hand stuff. 
Nenia, thanks so much for the membership. I really appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, I feel like I could probably hearth back to town. That would be okay. Is, is it a good time to hearth? It's an okay time to hearth. Let's go ahead and use it. Otherwise, I'm going to hold on to it and never use it. Do for you. See you later. Have a good one. Yeah, once we can, once we can spec into dual wield, then maybe, maybe it'd be better. I don't see know. You around. We'll, we'll try it. We'll Safe see. Travels. See you later. We will, we will possibly play around with a few different builds. Safe travels. Greetings, for the alliance. Go with honor, friend. Need something? See you later. See you around. Have a good one. Well met. Light bless you. King's honor, friend. Be careful for the alliance. you all right we got hamstring and heroic strike jay says the music is very loud i've been asking about the sound settings like you know pretty recently no one else has said that the music is really loud so it, it might be a you thing but i'm willing to hear some other opinions but yeah we, we just talked about the sound settings a little bit Farewell. ago might depend on what you're listening on to what kind of device Also allowing for the fact that like some of the music has moments when it's loud and but like then for the most part it's not loud like some of the music tracks have like crescendo moments uh, where they do get loud and usually like I'm, I'm usually adjusting those like throughout the stream I, f I feel like I feel like most people think it's okay trust me th and this is something that I sound test myself every day I, I turn on the stream and I listen for a little bit and then I make adjustments to my sound I'm like I'm pretty p pretty picky about it so yeah unless I hear a bunch of people saying hey the music is way way louder than your voice I I'm not gonna change anything because then it, then it, it, it probably comes down to what you're listening on and what you. your settings are if it's not happening to anybody else you know around. I appreciate the feedback, but in, in this case, I think we're okay for right now. When Kata comes out officially, is Wrath going to disappear like BC did? Yes, absolutely. They, they ha at least they haven't told us otherwise, you know? And we're, we're kind of assuming that if they were going to keep a Wrath server around, they, they probably would have talked about it. I feel like this would be the time for them to be talking about stuff like that. And because they haven't said anything, we just have to assume they're going to do exactly what they did when Wrath came out and all the BC servers rolled up into Wrath servers. Otherwise, you're going to have so many different versions of the game, like... I feel like they just don't want to split players up anymore, you know? And then, like, okay, so the problem is, like, if they were to leave a Wrath server up, can you imagine the outcry from people who want a BC server? They'd be like, oh, so... Wrath gets to keep a server, but Burning Crusade only got one year to live, and it didn't get to keep any servers. Like, people would be rightfully angry. Um, if they, if they let Wrath have servers after Kata comes out, but Burning Crusade didn't get to keep any, like, people would not be happy with that. And that's why, like, more than any other reason, that's why I think that there will not be Wrath servers. Because if there are Wrath servers, they have to open up a BC server. It, that would be the only way it would work. Because we, we only got a year with, uh, with TBC, whereas we've had, you guys have had two years with Wrath of the Lich King, you know? You're, you're getting the full two-year expansion experience, which is not what they did for, for BC. People won't be happy anyway, that's true, but you would, you would, like, almost deliberately piss a lot of people off if you did leave a Wrath server open. At least this way you can say that you're, you're doing what you've already set a precedent for. 
you can say just like when BC came, like we're, uh, when BC became Wrath, we're doing the same thing. At least like you have precedent to stand on uh, for not keeping a Wrath server open. But if you break precedent and you keep a Wrath server open, then you have to answer to all those people who like really really wanted a BC server. So it, it's easier from in a, from a corporate sense just to not not bother keeping one open. I, I hope that one day Blizzard and the Classic team learn like about progression servers. I, I hope that somehow they are exposed to the idea of a progression server, like a, a yearly resetting progression server uh, where they can, st it can the server can step through all the expansions uh, on a time-gated basis. Maybe you get a 50% level bu a leveling buff just to kind of like speed you along since we're going to want to release those expansions like every three or four months. And then, and then maybe we can go from uh, from vanilla to BC to Wrath. You know, maybe like four months per expansion. That's like that's a year, I think. I can't do math very well, but I, I think four times three is twelve. So you you do like four months in vanilla, four months in Burning Crusade, four months in Wrath of the Lich King reset. And then you just rinse and repeat. And then you have a yearly progression server, so like no matter what version of the game you enjoy, you're gonna have a time each year when you can jump in and you can enjoy that version of the game. That would be a smart way to go. A and doing that would be so much easier than like coming up with, with new seasons. You know, they could keep trying to do the season experiment, that's gonna be a lot of development time, eventually they're not gonna be able to keep it up. Uh, or they could just learn what progression servers are, and I think a lot of people in the classic community would be really happy to have like a yearly, like a yearly fresh start. Like every year you're going to get a fresh start and you're going to go through the expansions. Give us a, like a 50% experience buff should do it. I, th I think that would make it like a good timetable, like four months for each expansion to live and breathe. It, it give it the well it will they'll adjust the experience accordingly also keep in mind this is this is also really 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 important to keep in mind almost most wow players are not end game players most wow players are not people that are gonna like want to farm the end game and farm the end game and a lot of people don't do that especially in, in classic a lot of people are just kind of in it for the journey and, and so I think four months is fine. Fifty percent experience bonus, four months. Like you're gonna be fine. If you are a person who likes to farm end game content, it stands to you? reason that you are also a person that has some time to play the game. If you are not a person that has some time to play the game, then you probably don't care a lot about farming end game content. I, I think that's pretty fair to say. Hello. I don't think that's true. I think the people that would want a progression server would be the people who want the journey. That's the whole point. You get to progress through all the eras of the game. I, I think more so than anything else, it's the it's the levelers, the people See, who really? just enjoy leveling characters that just love that fresh start. The people who who want endgame, those people are playing retail, or or they're or they're playing Wrath of the Lich. The people who really 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 want endgame have their version of endgame that they enjoy. I, I think it's the levelers who would who would like to have a progression server. The people who are nostalgic for just playing in a certain era. Like there will be opportunity for people to do endgame content inside of that. But no, I think I think the people who are hardcore about endgame have their versions of the game where they can be hardcore about that. Like they got sob, they got wrath, they got uh, they got retail. I think they're covered. I, I don't think we have to worry about hardcore raiders in like everything that we think about because <laughs> hardcore raiders are like few and far between. It's a very small percentage of the player base. It just so happens that it's a vocal percentage of the player base, but a lot of people don't raid. And even among people who raid sometimes, like not everybody raids frequently. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We're about to, we're not going to have a repeat of yesterday's debate. Absolutely not. There is no debate. When I, when I say that most people don't raid in Classic, I'm right about that. There isn't a debate. Most, the majority of players do not raid weekly. Like, there is isn't there is not an argument there. The WoW player base is huge. And the majority of people 
enjoy the leveling, they enjoy five mans, uh, they enjoy puggable content, but the majority of WoW players are not hardcore players who are concerned with getting the raid done every single lockout. People live in those groups, you know, they get into guilds or they have friends and they, they start to think that like everybody's like them, but it's not even close to true. Yeah, there you go. You just proved your own, my point. Yeah, most players don't get past level 20. Sure, because they don't care. <laughs> and so, like, those people would love a progression server where they can level a little bit faster and they can just play alts. A progression server is not for raiders. Like, that's not the point of a progression server. We, we have plenty of ways for people to, to really enjoy raiding. How are you? Safe travels. Yeah, in, in, in a progression server, you'd have time to do them and see them. You, d you just wouldn't be doing them over and over and over and over and over again for months and months and months and months at a time. You'd go in, you'd see the raid, maybe you would do it a couple times, and then you'd probably wait for the next uh, phase to open up. Similar to what a lot of people do with Sod. You, you accommodate the largest group of players. The largest group of players are the people that don't raid. So you always think about your biggest player base first. At least you should. Retail WoW doesn't do that so well. But you should always think about the biggest group of players first, not, not the loudest group. Anyway, like I said, not everybody's a raider. You're a raider. Not everybody cares about getting all their gear from a raid. That's that's not what the majority of people who play the game care about. And that's okay. It's okay for you to enjoy the game your way and for other people to enjoy the game their way. Are we doing this again? Oh, we're not doing this again. Mm -mm. Nope. As as might soon be made apparent, we will. I promise, we won't be doing that again. Yeah. <laughs> will says no. Everyone has to enjoy the game my way, or I will hold my breath. Yes, that's exactly what these arguments begin to sound like. Yes. That's that's exactly what the what these kinds of discussions begin to actually sound like. Mm-hmm. Food photographer, you loved the 50 man raids? Dude, where'd where'd you find the 50 man raids? I've heard of 40 man raids. But Jay, what you mean, man, is that four months is not enough time for you to experience the expansion the way you want. And you're trying to apply your feelings to people that you don't know. What I'm telling you as someone who's not you is that for a lot of us, that would be enough. Especially like I talked about having a little bit of an XP bonus. So what you're saying, you're, you, what you mean to say, which would be true, you could make a true statement by saying, I, Jay the product, do not think that four months would be enough time for me, Jay the product, to enjoy the to enjoy the phase. What I'm saying is me, Robert Rambles, with a 50% XP buff, that would be more than enough time for me. In fact, it would be perfect for me. So see, we are different. <laughs> we, and, and between us, there are probably many, many people with similar and different opinions because we are all different people. That's the important part. That's the part that you're not accepting. I accept that for you, four months is not going to be enough. You seem unwilling to accept that there are people for which it would be more than enough time. So, but we don't have to keep talking about it because we, we disagree. And so we have aired our disagreement. We have stated our opinions. And we are not going to agree. You are not going to convince me 
And I am not going to convince you, and that's okay. Need help? Light bless you. Go with honor, friend. King's honor, friend. Be careful. You miss. You did misunderstand my point because you're thinking mainly about yourself and your opinion, and you're you you're getting very caught up in your feelings about like how you feel about that time restriction, as opposed to just being open to the concept that like people value the game for different reasons. And the, you know, like what I kept trying to say was that people, not everyone is a raider. In fact, most people are not raiders. That was the critical part that you kind of just ignored was just the, the fact that the majority of people are, are not raiders. You need something? And so the majority of people who would Go be interested in a, in a fresh start progression server would not be people who wanted to farm the endgame content because someone who is only interested in farming endgame content has better places to do that uh, with better rewards and quite frankly with better endgame content, you know? Need help? Light bless you. Can we all agree that the ponytail is bis? Yes. Yeah, ponytails are bis. We, I think we can all safely agree on that. Absolutely. Uh, level 8, almost level 9. I'm kind of thinking that like maybe I should be heading over to Dunmoro, but may maybe we can get level 9, get a little bit into level 9, and maybe that would be a, a better time to zone hop. Yeah, see, Grant says no zone hopping? Right, I'm just, that's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, zone hopping, like, soon. Like, soon. I always find Dunmoro to be... Dunmoro's like a, a little bit tougher than than Elwyn Forest. I, I don't know what it is. I think it's like the layout of the of the mobs and like what their level ranges are in different areas, but I always find Dunmoro to be a little bit tougher. So I, I don't mind going there with a little bit more of an advantage. So I'm, I'm gonna zone hop at... Uh, I'm gonna zone hop at level 9. Uh, it's just that just people just like to have their opinions and like a lot of times it's hard for people to have an opinion to encounter a person who is verbal and doesn't share their opinion like people people get kind of stuck on the concept that they have to convince somebody of something that's all it, it's just it's a natural human reaction that we have uh, like for some reason when we when we encounter somebody who just has a different opinion like our first instinct like, is not to just accept that they are different. Our first instinct is often to try to convince them, convert them, refute them. And if all that shit fails, we typically resort to trying to bash them and discredit them and their intelligence. We, we as humans, we have like an arc that we go through. But a lot of times, like, there's no step on that arc that is simply acceptance. We go from having an opinion, to meeting someone else with a different opinion, to trying to convince them that we're right, to more and more belligerently trying to convince them that we are right. And then if we can't do that, we try to discredit their intelligence by pointing out things specific? that are only kind of related. We, we just start pointing out like other different things. Like humans are pretty predictable in how they, what, what they do when they encounter someone who disagrees. And it's like, it's not really their fault. Have a good one. So. I, I try not to hold it against anybody. And and then denial. <laughs> and then we deny. We I was not trying to convince you. I was not I was not saying the same thing over and over. I did not say anything. In fact, you typed it for me. In fact, I had your opinion. You made me change my opinion, and then you said I was wrong. In fact, we agreed the whole time and you were arguing with me. And then the final step is is denial. <laughs> the, that's like that's it that's this it's the cycle of disagreements and it happens to people all the time and the biggest failure of it all is like we don't have to be in a cycle of disagreement we can just accept things right away but that doesn't often happen uh then again looking at these wolves like level nine level nine prowlers maybe i would be better off just zone hopping early Oh, I, I know that it makes sense, because I, I, like, the unfortunate thing about it is I knew that I was right all along. Because the only thing that I was saying for sure was that everyone was different and that not everybody rated. So, like, the whole time I only had two points. 
the entire time. And I and all I did was say those two points over and over again, which is that A, everyone's different. B, not everybody raids. So like I don't know what was so hard to understand about it. But again, like I I do understand it cuz you you get caught up in the cycle of uh of disagreement. And it, it becomes really hard to like process anything when you're stuck in that state. I convinced the wolf that he's dead. That was easy, yeah. That's the that's the easy thing. Hey, a a at least you didn't try to convince me that if I don't log, I might as well just quit the game. At least at least it didn't get to that point. Uh, burnt leather breeches. One agility. Uh, is the one agility going to benefit me more than the armor? Probably not. Probably not. The, o the only thing that I will say is like in the future, especially in like a, a public forum, when you express your opinion and you are listened to and heard, and then someone else says, I disagree with that, I feel this way, just, just let it be. It's the easiest thing you can do. Just I accept that they listened to your opinion, that you were heard, and then I accept that they said something that you did not agree with and just like let it drop would be like the easiest thing to do. That's the only real advice I would give. Be very careful of trying to apply your your feelings about any matter to other people. Just like accept that everyone's different. And we'll leave it there and, and we'll let we'll let the YouTube comments decide who was right. <laughs> We'll leave it to the comments. Folks watching the VOD after the fact, this is on you. We demand a poll. Yep. There will be judgment of some kind, yeah. I always feel so guilty when like somebody gives me a useful buff and I have no useful buffs to give them. Now he's aggroed a wolf, just trying to heal me, help me out with a little buff. Now he's in combat. I'll help this guy out a little bit. Oh god. <laughs> Meanwhile, another bear. He saw, he aggroed the bear like he got aggro. He what did he do? Did he heal me again? He did something to me that the bear did not like. Uh, how's he doing? He's doing okay. 
the biggest mistake he's making is that he doesn't he doesn't seem to have a wand. Like that's his biggest mistake. Like this dude needs a wand like ASAP. Do I have like a wand? I don't have anything to give him. He really needs to be wanding things down. That's going to be a lot more powerful than like the mace melee attack. Don't let him buff shame on you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't, I can't, I couldn't do anything to help. I could have invited him to group. I guess, like, in his situation where he's, like, trying to melee, I could have invited him to group and then given him, um, given him Battle Shout. Like, if, he, if he's gonna insist on meleeing with a mace, that could have helped him out for a little bit. A nice little two-minute boost. Help him level up his one-handed mace skill. See, these prowlers and these forest bears, man, they're no joke. I'm kind of thinking that, yeah, maybe maybe there was an opportunity just to go to Dunmoro a little bit earlier. Uh, that being said, we, we are almost level 9. Uh, maybe I could get the wood and I could, I could leave the bears and the wolves for when we come back. We still need a bunch of prowlers. I still need a couple of forest bears. Like, maybe I don't have to get this one done. Let's finish the bundles of wood. Um, we could scout through the Jasper Load Mine. Maybe we could find the guards. But yeah, I, I might leave this kill quest for later. I see there's enough people playing that finding bundles of wood has become challenging. Oh, here's one. This should be the last one we need. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I don't think he expected anything in return. I, I just feel guilty. I, I don't often play classes that have useful buffs for other players. I only the finest goods. Uh, I'm gonna sell the green. I don't think we need it. If I'm gonna work on alchemy anytime soon, I should, probably, I should probably do a little bit of that. Maybe back in uh, Goldshire or back in Stormwind. The weird thing is, even though I'm tracking herbs, I don't have a marker up here on my mini-map for tracking herbs. Like, yeah, oh, there, there it is. It, did you guys see that? Like, it wasn't there. We were tracking this herb, and then it popped in. That's, that's strange. I don't think, like, I'm not using any add-on that should be affecting my mini-map. So I don't know what that's about. Warriors need intellect because most of us, most of us are not that smart. So we definitely, we appreciate the intellect. The intellect helps us level up our weapon skill. Yeah, we can level up the weapons a little bit faster, so... It's appreciated. It's the only time that we have to feel even, like, remotely bright. I gotta get into some two-handed weapons. It's been cool to have the sword and board, but I, I really... I gotta go to Stormwind. We got some trainings to do. Uh, do I want to find the scouts right now? Not really, because finding both the scouts means fighting through, like, a bunch of the murlocs. Uh, I'm gonna grab the one scout. But I, I don't know if I'm gonna deal with the other one yet. These murlocs, like, they often respawn, respawn so fast that they're hard to clear the area around the other body. So we might have to do that when we're, like, level 12 or 13. Uh, this is probably not a really great situation to be in. I think that these guys might kill us. 
Unless I get some big crits. Mm, I don't know. This might be another L. I got- oh, I got potions! Oh, look at that. I didn't know I had all these. Let's go ahead and move these out somewhere that I can actually see them. That would be smart. Even with the potion, he almost got us. That's a good point. A, a big difference between like a vanilla, a like a classic and a retail is that, you know, in, in classic era, you can spend several days in an area. Like you can spend the day in an area, you can leave that area, you can spend the day somewhere else, you can come back the next day to the original area. Whereas, yeah, like, you know, pro probably any leveling after Cataclysm, you probably just level from like zone to zone and you, you don't really worry about spending too much time anywhere. I hadn't thought about that. Corey, I appreciate you saying so, man. I, I try to I try to make them enjoyable. I try to make them chill. <laughs> it, it doesn't it doesn't always work that way. But it works that way like 80, 85 to 90 percent of the time. It's been, it's been really enjoyable today to, to be able to get on to Classic Era and just play Classic Era. I really appreciate you guys being here for it. Because I, I didn't really, this was the only version of the game that I wanted to play today. I wasn't really like feeling anything else. And it, it definitely means a lot to me that I can I can pick the version of the game that I want to play the most and that you guys still want to hang out and be here for it. Why does this game cost money monthly? Because, because money. Because money, money, money. Mainly because it's, it's, a, it's a great game. <laughs> like, also, please keep in mind when you're thinking about, like, paying for this game monthly is that right now, like, your $15 sub gives you access to, like, a bunch of different ways to play the game. Y you get more for your sub and WoW than you get from, like, any other subscription that you pay for. Like, you can play, like, so many different versions of Classic. Now you can play the new Battle Royale mode that they put into retail. Like, you get a lot of money for your sub. Also keep in mind that the sub has... Everything else in life costs more money than it did, like, 20 years ago. But the WoW sub costs the same exact amount of money that it cost 20 years ago. Whereas the price of everything else has gone up by, like, 30 or 40%. So, you know... If you want things that are good, and you want them to be consistently good, and you want them to be around for a long time, then unfortunately you have to pay for them. That's unfortunately just how it works. 
Yeah, a, a lot a lot of cost to go into maintaining seven different versions of the game for people to enjoy. And what I try to remind myself, I, I try to remind myself about inflation, how like the cost of everything else is more, but the cost of my WoW sub has never changed. You've, you've only ever paid one subscription. Y you have never paid for two subscriptions. Never. There has never been a different sub for Classic and a different sub for Retail. Keep in mind, Classic's only been out since 2019. In that time, you have gotten access to Classic with your sub. Your sub gets you into Retail. Your sub gets you into Classic. Your sub gets you into Sod, your sub gets you into Wrath of the Lich King, your sub gets you into Hardcore. Now your sub gets you into the new Battle Royale mode, uh, the Plunderstorm. So you, you get a lot for your sub. I don't I don't really feel too badly for people that like they don't want to pay any money to play a game. I don't know. If you don't want to play money to play a game, you, you can go play on like a mobile game and like there's lots of mo mobile games that are free to play and a, a lot of them are probably garbage, but I'm sure there are some good ones out there. Yeah, like ultimately when it comes to a big game, what, like like a, a World of Warcraft sized game, like free to free to play is just like really not going to make it good. A lot of bad things happen to games when they become free to play. A lot of times when a game is free to play, it also kind of becomes pay to win. Because then they have to milk money out of those people who are willing to pay. Like, they have to find a way to make some people willing to pay a lot of money. Because a lot of people are paying no money, they need to incentivize a small group of people to pay a lot. And so they have to find ways of, like, creating whales. Easiest way to create a whale is pay to win. We've aggroed a caster. We've aggroed another guy. This this might be a loss. Let's try to run away. I think running away... It might be too late to run away, but I think running away is the only option that we have. We might actually leash him. Yeah, we might be good. Is it okay to mention other MMOs? Yeah, you can mention them, sure. Mm -hmm. you, can, you, can mention, you can mention most things that are game-related. Unless you are espousing a radical opinion about those games, or, or, like, or making statements that are completely incorrect. The main thing that will get you in trouble around here is if you're saying something that's wrong, ignorant or you're being belligerent about anything <laughs> that's mainly the only ways you can get in trouble if you're belligerently sticking to your your ideas and your ideas are wrong or just blatantly spreading mistruth that's really all that'll get you in trouble besides like politics all that stuff like no politics but when it's game related like not a lot of things will get you in trouble who decides what is wrong me in this case yeah. <laughs> in, in this case, I decide if you are if you are completely wrong and belligerently sticking to your guns, then we are going to have a problem. Doesn't happen often. A lot of people can be talked down. But ultimately, like I decide if someone is completely wrong or or belligerently wrong. In this space at least. In other spaces, other people have to decide. Glenn, good afternoon, man. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it.
Yeah, like, in, in all honesty, like, most MMOs that stick around for any length of time and that are actually worth their salt have some kind of pay model. Whether the pay model is you, you pay for, like, a box copy and then you get most access, and then there's, typically with that, there's, like, an in-game shop. Like, consider ESO. Like, ESO seems to have just, like, a box copy price. You, you pay for the box copy of the game or the expansion or whatever, and there's not like a mandatory monthly subscription fee, but there is a there is an in-game shop that often pops up and often tries to get you to spend money on like on currencies. They want you to spend your real life money on currencies, and it seems like a lot of the currencies can help you do things like level up faster and, and things like that. So while while there's not a subscription, you don't pay every month. Like you are you are hit by the store like very often. Like I feel like every time you level up in ESO, you have a pop up that that can link you directly into the store page if you click on the wrong thing. That's like one of my only beefs with ESO is I, I hate being like hit with that like store page like while I'm playing the game. I hate that when I ding a level in ESO, like, the page that comes up looks suspiciously like links into a cash shop. That's, like, the only turnoff, really, of, like, of ESO from, like, that standpoint of their pay model. Is like, I'd almost rather pay a sub, and then you leave me alone. Like, you don't try to get me to buy currencies, you don't try to get me to buy experience boost, like, I'm paying a sub, like, leave me alone. Please don't put the store, like, right in my face. But that's, like, that's, like, a very... You know, specific thing to me, I, I just don't appreciate being hit with the store page. Not that I play a lot of ESO, but every time I go back to ESO and try things out, like, I always get annoyed by the page that pops up. Because it pops up, like, all the time. Yeah, they, they try to find the people that are willing to, to give them money, and that, that's, what, that's what I was saying, like, that's what happens when they don't, like, have an enforced, like, monthly fee, is they, they try to get more money out of the people who are susceptible to spending money in a video game. Uh, because, you know, the majority of people are just gonna pay the box copy, then they're, they're not gonna give them any more money after that, they have to try to get money out of the people who are more willing. I thought these guys would be, like, easy enough to get some of the bandanas, but they're actually level 8 and they, they hit kind of hard. Now I'm not so sure about my choices. I think I might kill this one and run away. Maybe we'll run away without killing this one. Hmm. I'm gonna run, but yeah, I don't think running is gonna- running is not gonna work here. We, we might be close to a graveyard, that's about all we can hope for at this point. 12 HP, yeah, this is- this is a loss. Oh, he reset with 2 HP left. 2 HP left, he resets. Wow. Yeah, ESO- ESO has the best writing, the best voice acting, and the best storytelling of, of any of the MMOs that exist today. Final Fantasy XIV has a great JRPG story. But, like, a JRPG story is, like, very specific to people who like JRPGs, and it's, you know, you, you're either into JRPGs or you like anime. Like, and then, like, Final Fantasy XIV has probably the best JRPG story that I've ever seen. But on the whole, I think, like, ESO has better world building, better writing, better, like, stories told in, like, in, in a world. Whereas FF14 is telling, like, a very linear JRPG story. The combat in ESO, not fun. <laughs> That's the only reason I don't play ESO. Oh man, I, I wish I found the combat in ESO fun and engaging, man. I would play so much freaking ESO. The stories are so good. I got characters in that game that I like and care about. Neri Neryu, the uh, like the dark elf assassin lady, like I love her character. I love running across her in different areas. Like, yeah, like oh my gosh, I wish the combat were were like weightier, or or felt more meaningful, or just like I wish the combat felt better. I wish the combat felt like it mattered. Like I don't know what what how else to put it. It's like there's two different kinds of games. Like for me, 
go with fun. There's games where like I know I love them because I just I just want to fight everything. Like I want to get into combat. I want to push the buttons. And then there are games where like I avoid combat because like I don't really like pushing the buttons. It's not really a great time. It's not super satisfying. Be careful. And unfortunately, ESO falls into the second category. Like, I find myself avoiding combat. I, like, combat just seems like a little, like, an inconvenience to me seeing the story. I wish it had amazing combat. It, it just, it just doesn't, see, not for me at least. I, it's not, I should, like, preface with that. Like, I don't enjoy the combat. Like, to me, to me, it feels really light. It doesn't have enough oomph. It, it doesn't feel like super responsive and like ultimately fighting stuff doesn't really seem to matter very much. I don't know. But I feel the same way about like Guild Wars 2. Like Guild Wars 2, I, I don't feel like it has a great class fantasy and I don't really feel like the combat is very great. Uh, we're waiting till level 10 for anything else. See you around. All right, so uh, we could probably we could probably head over to Dunmoro, make a little hop into the Dwarven lands. And like, and maybe the combat. What I have to think about is like, it's possible. I I played ESO when it first came out. I don't really remember how I felt about the combat at that time. Uh, Guild Wars 2, I did not play when it first came out. So like, I try to think that maybe these games felt better in their vanilla, in their vanilla incarnations. Like maybe combat was important and meaningful when the game first launched. Maybe like playing it then, maybe it was a better time. Same thing with Guild Wars. Maybe the combat was better and more challenging and like felt more purposeful when the game first launched. And then over time, you make a bunch of system changes, you tweak classes, characters become more powerful, uh, then combat kind of becomes like more meaningless. So I, I always allow for that fact, like maybe if I had played these games in their vanilla versions, I would enjoy them a lot more. It, it's always hard to come into an MMO like really, really late in its life. And just adapting to all the changes that have happened over time when you don't really have like a baseline on how it used to be. More MMOs need to release a, a classic version of themselves. We, I, I need like Guild Wars 2 classic. I, I would take a Realm Reborn classic because I, re I remember when a Realm Reborn felt like an MMO RPG. When you had to do side quests and you had to do like the guild levies. You had to do your hunt log. You had to level up your side, your side class to unlock your main class. Like I remember when a Realm Reborn was in 1.0. It felt like playing an RPG, like it felt like playing an actual MMORPG. And when they streamlined it so that all you had to do was do the MSQ, it stopped feeling like an MMORPG and just started feeling like a JRPG. Because you, you just fly around the world from point to point, you teleport around, and you just do the story stuff. And that's it. But yeah, I, I guess I'm holding out. I'm holding out for ESO Classic and, and Guild Wars 2 Classic. Maybe in, in 10 years. Good day to you. Safe travels. See you around. All right, maybe while I'm here, I ought to do a little bit of, uh, of alchemy. We need to get some empty vials. Yeah, for some reason, the, the combat, especially in WoW, has always felt, like, more connected. Like, I, I press a button, something happens in the game, and it just feels right. It feels timed correctly, it has impact. Like, I press the button, something happens, and it feels good. Or, like, in some other games, like, you press a button, it, it just feels like there's, like, this little bit of disconnect. It's not lag or latency, necessarily. It's really prominent in FF14. Like, FF14 should feel like WoW because it's basically almost like a carbon copy 
but you press a button, something happens, but it doesn't it doesn't feel the same way that like WoW combat feels. Guild Wars 2 is the same way, you know, it's basically tab targeting MMO, but it doesn't feel the same when you push a button. I don't really know exactly what it is. Yeah, Final Fantasy felt floaty. Floaty floaty is a good term, like light, airy, floaty, yeah. That's a good way to describe it. We were talking earlier about the state of the economy, the state of the auction house. Let's go take a look at a couple of things. Let's have a look. Uh, let's look at this the shining silver breastplate. Now, a lot of times you can get this for anywhere from like four to eight gold. If I can spell. Fourteen gold. Okay, so that's that's a little bit high, but it's not outrageous, especially considering how few there are like on the auction house. But yeah, it, that's like a, that's a little that's like fifty percent inflation. Um, what else can we look at? Let's look look at like stacks of resources. Let's look at like light leather and just kind of see like. There's not a lot. Oh, that's like almost almost a gold. Oh, well, not not quite. This is this is kind of a lot of a gold. Yeah, this is a little bit inflated. This is really good for people that want to sell stuff. Like this is this is a seller's market. Like you you can get like you can sell a stack of light leather for half a gold. Like some people are selling it for almost an entire gold. That's that's pretty good. Like medium leather must be even more. Medium leather is selling for a, a gold and 30 silver a stack. That's actually really good for people that want to sell that kind of stuff. Yeah, the economy here is a little bit, a little bit inflated. Let's, let's look at like weapons. The Stormwind music is kicking out. Uh, let's look at like two-handed axes. <laughs> well... I mean, that's a, like a, a high-end example, but this isn't bad. Like these, are, these aren't awful prices. I don't feel like you can get yourself a, a brain hacker uh, for a hundred and fifty gold. That's pretty decent. What else is going on? Uh, like, yeah, like this is not bad. The Hellslayer battle axe, twenty gold. This is okay. Blood splitter for nineteen gold. It, the prices are a little bit inflated, but they're not crazy. This is a little crazy. That's like that's random. Kill kill maim for 21 gold. Okay, that's a little bit expensive, but it's not awful. Yeah, like the prices are a little high. But it, it's not it's not terrible, right? It's not like I now if this were like a hundred gold for like a level 15, then I'd say the economy's broken. But 19 gold on a server that's been around for so long, like the server's been around for a long time. So like the fact that prices are not more inflated is kind of astonishing. Let's train, uh, let's train level, let's train swords, like two-handed swords we can train. Need help? Uh, let's see, what else? Daggers, we don't really need. Uh, I'm probably not going to train daggers. And maybe we can maybe we can afford to get a, a little sword. Probably not. No, we have 13 silver, so I, I doubt I'll find anything in my price range uh, for 13 silver. I might I might send myself a little bit of uh, of gold from my other characters. Most of the gold I have on this server comes from hardcore characters who died in hardcore, and then I sent them here. So like that gold is hard earned, and I probably will use it at some point. Yeah, like, we, we really can't afford much. 
Uh, we could we could we could spend all of our money and we could get like a, a level seven green. I I think I'll wait. I think I'll wait. We'll probably find something. Have I gotten a hardcore character to sixty? No, highest level in hardcore is forty seven. Forty seven. I have gotten a bazillion hardcore characters killed though. Uh, is there anything else I want to do in Stormwind while I'm here? I don't think there's anything that we have to do. We have this little breadcrumb back here, but I'm not really worried about that one right now. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, 47. 47 was back on, um, on Bloodsail Buccaneers doing solo self found. That level 47 Pally, he didn't die. He never died. I retired him because we had not found a weapon in like 20 levels and we were doing the solo self found thing. So he didn't have a weapon. And so like what happened was fighting green enemies, it would take me forever to kill even a green enemy. By the end of each fight, I had half my health and I had no mana because our kill rate was so slow due to the lack of a weapon that eventually I just retired him. And he retired to Booty Bay. Spent the rest of his life fishing. He's actually on this server. I, I transferred him. When when Blizzard opened up free servers off Bloodsail Buccaneers, I transferred him over here. So he still exists, and he's still level 47. And then I had uh, a level 39 Pally that died in official hardcore. Uh, she fell off a boat, drowned in the middle of the ocean. Super embarrassing. Um, and so she's on this server too. And she also had a bunch of gold on her when she died. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's when I learned that, like, solo self-found is not for melee characters. If you wanted to do solo self-found, you really have to go on a caster. Because, like, if you don't find a weapon, mm, it gets it gets impossible. I remember trying to grind in Swamp of Sorrows against green enemies, and, like, it was just terrible. So, yeah, technically he never died. The boat death was funny. The boat death was hilarious because, like, you could die that way in real life. Like, sometimes you just fall off a boat and you drowned. And it was the most, it was the most realistic hardcore death you could ever think of. Like, how'd you die? I was hanging on the side of a boat. I fell off the side of the boat and I drowned. Like, in the middle of the ocean. Within sight of land, we saw, we saw the warrior island, the warrior training island, where they learned, like, their, their berserker stance or whatever. We just couldn't get there in time. Hearthstone was on cooldown, like we popped our bubbles, potions, like we just did, we just couldn't make it. And it was silly, you know, like I was stuck in the side of the boat in Booty Bay. And when the boat left the dock and I didn't fall out of the boat, I felt, okay, I'm fine. Like we're kind of stuck in the side of the boat, but it's fine. We didn't fall out. As soon as we zoned into Kalimdor, boop, I fell off the boat. And I was like, yeah, like, of course you fell off the boat, stupid. You should never stick yourself to the side of a boat and then try to cross an ocean. So yeah, it was funny. It was really funny. <laughs> you logged into me swimming, trying to, like, trying to get to the island. Oh, that's a hilarious time to have, like, joined. So, it was so brutal. That one really hurt, yeah, because that, that character was going to be the one that made it. You know, it wasn't solo self found. We had a bunch of gold. Like that character was gonna. I, I think that like in my in my heart of hearts, hardcore might have died that day. When that I know I kept going. I played a lot of characters after that. But like in my heart of hearts, when that character died, like a little piece of me went with it. And then we got the, we got the hunter up to forty two, and the hunter is still alive. So, you know, there, there's always hope that, like, maybe someday I get a character to 60 in Hardcore. I, I would I would settle for getting a character to 60, like, just normally. <laughs> would, would be okay with me at this point. It must have been a tough thing to watch, yeah. You did. You tried to warn me about staying on the side of the boat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like it was a total, just like stupid decision. 
I, sh I should have gotten off the boat, I should have got around, waited for the next boat, like... That's one of those things, like, obviously hindsight is twenty twenty. Like, I, I learned, I learned from my mistake, but it doesn't matter, the character's still dead. I learned a lesson you should never have to learn. Don't hang on to the side of a boat as it crosses an ocean. Like, most people just know that innately. It, it takes someone special like me to have to die like that first before I get- before I learn anything. Alright, guys, I think I'm gonna stop right here for today. Thank you all very much for being here. Um, I'm having a great time just playing vanilla. This is my favorite version of the game. In my own opinion, this is the best version of the game. And it's been fun. We're gonna do this again tomorrow. I, uh, I, I probably won't play any Plunderstorm tomorrow. I, my, my Plunderstorming days might, might be over for the time being. So I think tomorrow we will be right back here, we will go into Dunmoro, and we will continue our journey on this character. Thank you guys for being here for it. As always, take care of yourselves out there in the real world, and take care of each other, and we will see you back here again very soon. Bye for now.